I just activated the silent cartographer and now I'm gonna do a grenade jump. You may have seen a speed run before and think you know what's about to happen, but trust me, watch this anyway. Told you so. Hi. I'm a frog. A little over a week ago, a runner named Sloth SG set a new CE Legendary full game record with a time of 1 hour, 3 minutes, and 7 seconds. As the record approaches 102, this raises a question, how fast can it go? There's lots of strats that people have come up with you may see in something like a segmented run that aren't practical at all in a full game run, but in this video, I wanted to talk about and show off a few different tricks that actually could potentially be in a future full game world record speedrun. Let's hop in. So if you don't know how the silent cartographer speedrun goes, it's a bunch of things happening in a really short sequence. First, we fling ourselves using the Warthog through a door that's supposed to lock before you can enter. Then we fall off of the shafted platform in such a way that we don't take fall damage, then do another fall, and then activate the silent cartographer just a couple minutes into the level. The jump I did to start this video is called Shafted Stack, which takes you all the way from the bottom up to the top where we first fell off from. What we would normally do instead is basically the same jump except we would go a floor lower, where you can then either run up manually or do a second grenade jump back up to the top. Shafted Stack has been attempted in full game runs before, I don't know if it's ever been done successfully because the issue is that it's almost the exact same setup as regular Stick Stack and whether or not you get enough height is largely just luck. So Shafted Stack is possible to do in a full game run, but not at all likely. Thankfully, that's not actually the trick I wanted to talk about. Behold, this grenade jump. That's called Hog Stack. It's faster than Shafted Stack and a bit more consistent than Shafted, although there's definitely still a luck element in terms of your height. And it's exactly what it looks like. We're doing a higher stick stack and then entering the passenger seat of the Warthog through the window. To do that, though, we have to do the Warthog Fling at the start a little bit different. The easiest way to do the Warthog Fling normally is to have you as a driver exit right into the door. When you come back up, though, the Warthog will be facing the window, meaning you couldn't re-enter it from outside the window. So to set up Hog Stack, you have to do the Fling to where the Warthog will be pretty much straight and right by the window. The issue, of course, is that you're further away from the door when you exit and there's not as much momentum pushing you through, so it's harder to get through the door. It's a tougher Wardog fling and you have to go a bit higher in the grenade jump than regular stick stacks, so why am I saying this could plausibly be in a world record full game run? Well, people have done it in full game runs before. Take From the Grave, for example, who has the world record for Silent Cartographer on Heroic. In one of his full game runs, he was minus 28 out of Truth and Reconciliation, meaning he was 28 seconds faster than his best ever run. And for some reason, he decided to try Hog Stack, and he actually got it. Hog Stack is really tough, but could it plausibly be in a full game record? Yes. How about everyone's favorite level, the library? In a regular speedrun, we would do a grenade jump and get where we're not supposed to be, draw over a reviver flood that always spawns, take him to the first locked door of the level, shoot him a couple times, and do a trick called a flood bump to get through the door, not have to wait for spark, and not have to fight hardly any flood at all, allowing us to skip the first few minutes of the level. What if instead we did the flood bump and instead of jumping through the door, we stayed in it and did some weird stuff? After getting bumped into the door, we have to do a jump into this corner and crouch. I look off to the side a little bit to get into a specific nook, then turn the other way. The inputs that I have to do are weird and awkward on a controller. I'm holding jump, then I uncrouch, and basically at the exact same second, I start holding right on the D-pad. This lets us hit the geometry in just the right way to get warped up on top of the door. I switch to anniversary graphics because it's needed for the next lineup, but as you can see, I have to platform here without really being able to see what I'm jumping on. After the last jump onto this rafter thing, I look back at it directly and walk into it until I can't anymore, and that lets me know I'm in the right spot. Then you look at a certain spot. I don't know where you're supposed to look. I was doing it off this blue square way in the back. Then once lined up, you hold forward and again, intersect the geometry in such a way that you teleport ahead. Full disclosure, I segmented that trick so you may have noticed a couple of the edits because I'm not able to do all of that straight through. But if you can't tell where we're now at, we just went from the very first door to almost the end of the first floor with every enemy despawned so we can just run straight to the elevator. That trick, fittingly, is called first floor skip. There's a lot of parts to that trick and just doing everything thing first try is really, really tough. The biggest problem with first floor skip though is that the teleport sometimes just doesn't work and there's nothing you can do about it. The reason being that grenade jumps mess up your look angle. So whenever you do the grenade jump at the start, this changes your look angle and makes it just slightly different each time you play the level, meaning your lineup for first floor skip just might not work because of your look angle being slightly different. Like Hogstack, it has been done in full game before by the aforementioned full game record holder Sloth SG. 
SG, but only when his runs are dead going into library and he's tried to breathe new life into it. Still though, it's possible. It's been done in full game. Maybe it ends up in a record someday. Next up, we have a trick that out of everything in this video is the most likely to be in a future world record. In two betrayals, normally in a speed run at the start, we would get to this door before the outside and hit the button to open the door twice in a specific way. What this does is make it so no enemies spawn outside except for two elites and two jackals that are pre-spawned. You can walk all the way down to get in a banshee and there are absolutely zero more enemies in your way. The issue is that with the door open, we're skipping a trigger and the way two betrayals works is you have to hit every trigger in order to complete the level. So since we're skipping a trigger with the door, after getting in the banshee, you have to fly all the way back up the pyramid and hit the door button again, then fly all the way back down. But what if we didn't do the deload and just fought our way down to begin with? It would look something like this from a runner named Cambit, who has the two betrayals world record. As the door opens, you throw a plasma where the two elites spawn, then if you want to be a bit safer, you could throw a frag to take out some of the jackals and grunts. As you're running, you want to stick the elite on the next level down. Afterwards, Cambit lines up for a trick we call banshee nades, where he throws grenades in specific spots with specific timing to launch the banshee close. Closer. Without the index. The machinery in these cannons. After doing a big slide down the pyramid, he throws a frag left towards some jackals and grunts and gets in the banshee. Cambit makes that look incredibly easier than it actually is. I attempted recording it myself for about 10 minutes before I decided this is going to take me too long, and that even if I did pull it off, I wouldn't be nearly as clean as Cambit. And Cambit, by the way, is now the former full game record holder. We'll see if he tries to get it back, but he's insane, so be sure to follow him on Twitch to see live runs or here on YouTube, links in the comment section. The reason why no deload is so difficult is, well, one, you have to do everything correctly. Hitting the stick on the elite can be tricky, the banshee nades are really tough and easy to mess up, and you can easily mess up the slide and die from fall damage. Not to mention you're doing all of these things on the run while you're being shot at. And that's the other thing, this trick also takes a bit of luck that the covenant don't just immediately kill you and not even give you a chance. That's how most attempts of this trick go by the top runners, they do everything right but they get killed anyway. Sloth and Cambit are the last two full game record holders, and they both attempted no deload in full game many times and gotten it, so that's why this is definitely the most likely thing to be in the next record. But make no mistake though, it's not a crazy teleport or anything like that. No deload is still really, really tough. But for the best, it's still doable. Normally on 343 Guilty Spark in a speed run, we would enter the facility, go down the elevator, shoot some guys, run along the opposite wall from where you're supposed to, do a grenade jump into the floor above you, do some weird platforming that involves bouncing across a gap by crouching and uncrouching fast, and jumping back and bounds into a room that's supposed to be locked until after the flood shows up, skipping a lot of the level. This trick is called Reveal Skip, because we're skipping the flood reveal. You may be asking yourself, what could you possibly do here instead? Well, there's only one thing better than reveal skip, reveal skip skip. This is a trick that's only possible in anniversary editions of the game because of extra geometry that Saber Interactive added. As soon as you're able, you jump off of the elevator onto this ledge. There's very little space, and if you under or overshoot it, you'll fall down below. I move very carefully left here. In an actual run, you would want to be faster, and once you're standing in the right spot and lined up correctly, you turn to face the right a bit and lined up using your pistol reticle on the textures below. Once you're in the right spot, you hold left just a bit until you start falling. Then you hold right to get into a specific nook. For whatever reason, this makes you bounce non-stop. There's a hard to see line on the wall ahead that you line up with while scoped in. After lining up, you hold right and jump at the exact same time while your bouncing that's happening is going down. If you do it correctly, this is what happens. And just like that, we not only skip the flood reveal, we skip the reveal skip. Once again, for transparency, I recorded that in segments, not straight through. This trick not being in the current record is mostly, I think, just it being really, really hard and not worth the time save versus reveal skip. What I've been told is that if you do it fast, it only saves about 8 seconds. So why am I saying that could be in a full game run? Because once again, it has been. Who would be crazy enough to try it? This guy. Bearface. He used to do this in almost all of his full game runs, and his tutorial for it is how I learned the trick. Bearface also does live runs on Twitch, so I'll link both his tutorial and his Twitch in the comments. As far as I know though, no one else is interested in even attempting that in full game, but it can be done as Bear has illustrated in the past. If you take every individual level world record for Halo C and add them all together, plus add the unskippable cutscene times, you come out to 57 minutes and 57 seconds. We do hypothetically have the strats to beat the entire game in under one hour, all it would take is almost matching every individual level world record. So unless new tricks are discovered, sub one hour probably isn't happening. But there's still more progress that can be made between optimizing the current route even more, or maybe throwing in one of the tricks I talked about in this video. And you never know what else can be discovered either. If you like this video, be sure to click the one on screen to hear me explain 100% speedruns. I'll catch you next time. Oh,